Suppose that we have a vector alpha and you want to transform it to another vector with a different length. Or you have a vector beta and you want to rotate it. These are some examples of linear transformations by which we take a vector in our vector space and transform it into some other vector. It's really important that this transformation should be linear, meaning that if we perform the transformation on a combination of vectors, it is the same as acting on each vector individually and summing over transformed vectors without changing the coefficients. If we have a set of basis vectors and know what a linear transformation does to these basis vectors, we can find out what this linear transformation does to any vector. We can construct a matrix using elements of the linear transformation. These are n squared elements that characterize this linear transformation. If the basis is orthonormal, meaning that the inner product of EI and EJ equals delta IJ, we can write these elements as this expression. We can write a matrix for this orthonormal basis, which is a representation of the linear transformation in this basis. So if you want to know how linear transformations work, all you need to do is get familiar with matrices. The sum of two linear transformations is simply adding the matrices representing them. You just need to add the corresponding elements to get the result. For example, for these two square matrices, we just add the corresponding elements, and here is the sum. Two successive linear transformations on a vector can be represented as the product of the two linear transformations, and we call the product U. In the component form, it can be written as this expression, which we use to show the matrix representation. Now let's see how we can multiply two matrices. To find U11, take the first row of matrix S and the first column of matrix T. Then multiply each corresponding element and add. For U2n, we do the same thing by taking the second row of S and nth column of the second matrix. As an example, take these two matrices. For the first element, we use the first row of the first matrix and the first column of the second and multiply corresponding elements and add which yields 4. For the next element, take the first row of the first matrix and the second column of the second and do the same thing. Then we take the second row of the first matrix and the first column of the second matrix and finally for the last element the second row of the first matrix and the second column of the second one. We can also multiply a square matrix like T with a rectangular matrix like A which represents a vector. This is a column vector. Just take rows of T and columns of A and multiply corresponding elements and add. Pay attention that two matrices can be multiplied if the number of columns in the first one is equal to the number of rows in the second one. For a column matrix A, we can define A transpose, which is written as A tilde, which yields a row matrix. And for matrix T, we can find its transpose by interchanging its rows and columns. Note that the main diagonal stays where it was. A matrix is symmetric if its transpose doesn't change anything. And the matrix is anti-symmetric if the transpose reverses the sign. For example, the transpose of this matrix is exactly the same as the matrix, which is symmetric. And the transpose of this one is a similar matrix with signs reversed, which is anti-symmetric. Pay attention to how each element corresponds to its mirror element with respect to the diagonal. If we change each element of a matrix to its complex conjugate, the result is the conjugate of the matrix which is denoted by T asterisk and A asterisk. A matrix is real if all its elements are real, and imaginary if all its elements are imaginary. The Hermitian conjugate or adjoint of a matrix is defined as its transpose conjugate, which is denoted by dagger. Just interchange rows and columns and change the elements to their complex conjugates. A matrix is called Hermitian if its adjoint is equal to itself and anti-Hermitian if its Hermitian conjugate is equal to its reverse. Take these two vectors alpha and beta, which can be written as two column matrices A and B respectively. The inner product of alpha and beta can be written in their matrix form as A dagger B, which yields a complex number. Suppose that we have two matrices S and T. 
The question here is, is matrix multiplication commutative? Unfortunately, it's not always the case. It's very useful to define the commutator of two linear transformations, which shows the difference between using ST and TS. If the commutator is zero, S and T are commutative. Now let's find a transpose of ST. We take the kth element and interchange rows and columns, which can be written in the component form. Then write each component as a transpose. And we see that ST transpose is equal to T transpose S transpose. Now let's find ST dagger. As you can see, it's equal to T dagger S dagger. This matrix whose all elements on the diagonal are 1 and otherwise 0 is called the unit matrix and is denoted by I. In other words, its elements are delta I J equal to 1 if I and J are the same. If it acts on a vector, it doesn't change anything. The inverse of a square matrix multiplied by itself gives the unit matrix. Take S multiplied by T and multiply it by T minus 1 times S minus 1. It yields the unit matrix. So the inverse of S times T is T inverse times S inverse. The inverse of a matrix is calculated by this formula in which C is the matrix of cofactors and the determinant of T must be non-zero. So if the determinant of A matrix is zero, it doesn't have an inverse. The matrix of cofactors is calculated by multiplying minus 1 to the power of sum of i and j and a determinant of a submatrix created from T in which i throw and jth column is removed. For example, the first element of the cofactor matrix is calculated by this expression. This determinant is called minor which is the determinant of a submatrix of T, i throw and jth column erased. To find a determinant of small matrices, we can use this method called Laplacian. But for larger determinants, it's better to use a method called Gaussian elimination. In this formula, Mij is the minor and is the determinant of the submatrix we talked about. And I can be any number, meaning we can choose any row to do so. To calculate the determinant in this way, we need to calculate lower rank determinants. For example, for two and three dimensions, it can be written like this. So to find the inverse of a two by two matrix, you first need to calculate the determinant, and if it is non-zero, calculate the cofactor matrix. Take its transpose, and you have the inverse of the matrix. Finally, a matrix is called unitary if its Hermitian conjugate is equal to its inverse. As you can see, unitary transformations preserve the inner product.